Frank's Nursery and Crafts was an American retailer devoted to the sale of lawn and garden products from 1967 until 2004. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest video. Please hit that like button, leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to our regular scheduled program. Frank says give your lawn our best with Frank's own money-saving line of top quality lawn products. Like Frank's Long Life Lawn Food, 5,000 square foot bag, now just $5.99. And save 20% on every Frank's grass seed in the store. Every seed, every size, 20% off. A lawn you can love and low, low prices. Thanks, Frank's. Beautiful things begin at Frank's. Frank's Nursery and Crafts. The Frank's Nursery story begins with Frank Scher buying the fruit market where he worked at Joseph Campau at McNichols in Detroit. The renamed Frank's Cut Rate was a combination liquor, produce, and drugstore business. Billing itself as never closed and never undersold, the business thrived. Frank's Market began carrying seasonal plants including Christmas trees, Easter plants, and flats of springtime annuals in addition to their staples of fresh produce and other grocery items. In 1949, Cher and his nephew Max Weinberg opened a greenhouse on a vacant lot across the street from the market to accommodate the growing number of annuals and perennials the market offered. According to Frank's lore, the inspiration for this focus on plants was a difficult customer who complained about the price of coffee beans, but who then obligingly paid 79 cents for a pot of geranium. The price and the profit on the geranium was much higher than those on the coffee and Cher and Weinberg realized that there was apparently money to be made selling flowers. Soon, Franks was selling fertilizer, trees, and other landscaping supplies. The business thrived and in 1957 the company, by then four stores strong, incorporated becoming Franks Nursery Sales Inc. By 1965, Frank owned 18 stores throughout Michigan. Since the lawn and garden business was highly cyclical in nature, with highest revenues during the growing season, the company sought to offset the regular drop in revenues during the winter months. Towards that end, Frank's diversified and began to sell craft and hobby supplies, a line that Frank's management believed would complement its gardening merchandise since both appealed to customers' interest in do-it-yourself projects. The first Frank's Trims, a, a store which sold only craft goods, was opened in 1966. Frank's nursery sales went public, gaining a listing on the American and Detroit stock exchanges. Frank's used the funds to expand and build new stores, particularly in the neighboring states of Indiana and Ohio. In 1973, Franks opened its first four Illinois stores in suburban Chicago. The following year, Franks moved into Minnesota when it purchased five garden centers in suburban Minneapolis from the Green Giant Company. By its 25th anniversary in 1971, Franks had 51 locations in five states, employing approximately 1,200 workers. Sales had reached approximately $37.2 million, with a net profit of $1.13 million. During this time, Frank Scher was succeeded by his son, I. William Scher, who had previously served the company as executive vice president and treasurer. Max Weinberg continued to serve as the company president. In 1980, the company's name was changed from Frank's Nursery Sales, Inc. to Frank's Nursery and Crafts, Inc., to emphasize the dual nature of the retail chain. In the 1980s, Frank's stores were opened in Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Florida, Virginia, Missouri, New Jersey, Kentucky, and New York. During this time, much of Frank's expansion came by acquiring small regional chains such as Gaudio's in Philadelphia and Scott's Seaboard in Baltimore. In 1983, Frank's Nursery and Crafts was purchased by General Host Corporation for $42.4 million. Frank's at the time spanned 95 stores. At the time of the purchase, 
Frank's stores were expensive to build, with each store costing over a million dollars. A typical Frank's store was located on a three-acre site near a highly visible retail strip or shopping center. It covered 35,000 square feet, including an outside sales area. General Host incorporated the wide aisles, shopping carts, and vast selection that had been components of Toys R Us's success. Franks also began to enclose their outdoor garden supply area so that they could be used throughout the year. In 1991, the first of Franks' standalone Christmas stores, Christmas by Franks, opened. These stores were temporary installations placed in high-volume regional malls, allowing shoppers to purchase holiday decorations and gift wrap while they shop for gifts. These stores remind me a lot of seasonal-themed stores such as Spirit Halloween. Indeed, Christmas decorations and crafts became increasingly important lines to Franks, helping to compensate for the seasonal sales declines in gardening supplies. In 1993, the company launched Franks Supercrafts, opening two stores in the Detroit area. Designed as superstores, the Supercrafts stores encompass 20,000 square feet of retail space, allowing for a wider selection of craft supplies and home and holiday decorations, while incorporating in-store framing shops and floral arrangement services. Franks Supercrafts reminded me a lot of like Hobby Lobby. Just like Hobby Lobby, the stores featured hundreds of craft project displays, giving customers creative ideas and allowing them to see completed projects. A third Supercraft store opened in Philadelphia in 1994, and two more followed in New Jersey and Chicago. In 1994, General Host's headlong expansion had come to an end, as a series of new stores proved unprofitable. In January, Franks announced the closure of 26 stores, most of which were in Nashville, Tennessee area and in Florida. Company officials announced that such sales and closings would save General Host $3.8 million annually. In February of 2001, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy because it could not afford to pay its vendors. Matters were taken to bankruptcy court where questions arose as to whether or not Franks could avoid shutting down its retail stores. The matter was resolved and the company was able to recover and continue full operation. In September of 2004, company officials again filed for Chapter 11. The company was heavily in debt, particularly in relation to their vendors. On September 8 of that year, the decision was finally made to cease the operation of its 170 stores. Agreements were made with Kimco Cap Capital liquidation company, which allowed for closing down sales to be held in every outlet. After the closure of Frank's, the buildings, with a unique half outdoor, half indoor layout, had been slow to be reoccupied in an overbuilt retail market. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.